The following is brought to you by GoldSeekMint.com. Silver and gold bullion directly from the mint. GoldSeekMint.com. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette here at the Canadian Investor Conference, Vancouver. I'm here with Robert Levy, Managing Director for Border Gold. Welcome, Robert. Great to have you here with us. Thank you, Vanessa. Now, Rob, where do you see gold going in the next year? In the next year, I, I see gold starting to slowly track higher. I, I think we're going to see a bit of a dip going into the summer here with the seasonality of the precious metals, and there is going to be downward pressure on the prices. but. Long term, I, I'm still very much a gold bull, and I do think gold prices are going higher. Now, what, what do you think could trigger a movement in gold? Uh, to be honest, I think it's going to be as the U.S. economy starts to pick up again. And uh, To me, one of the biggest factors that moves gold, uh, besides economic uncertainty, where there's that the natural demand for the market, is inflation expectations. And once money starts changing hands, the, the U.S. economy really starts to pick up steam again. That, that's what's going to see investor appetite and investor demand for gold increase. Now, most people would think that gold would go up if the U.S. economy was doing worse, but you think gold will rise as the U.S. economy recovers? Uh, absolutely. It's going to be a slow recovery in the U.S., but the big thing is going to be the consumer, the U.S. consumer, as it goes up and spends again, and you start seeing the money velocity in the U.S., the fact that the Fed has increased their balance sheet and printed multiple uh, billions and trillions of dollars, but no money is actually changing hands. That's going to be the driving factor when money starts changing hands again. Interesting. And what do you think has kept gold fairly stable in recent months? I, I think it's low volatility. A lot of the reason is the big U.S. bullion banks starting to separate themselves from the commodities business. It's not really a market that they so much want to play in anymore. And it, it, definitely the demand for equities. Uh, it, when it, people see the S&P return 30% in 2013, uh, it, precious metals become less of that attractive asset, especially in a rising interest rate environment when people are looking for dividend yield or a, a return, a fixed income return, a, a, which is hard to get from the bond market. They're going into equities and they're pulling those funds from the gold market. So you think the U.S. economy is going to be on continuing to recover? Um, they just announced negative growth. Why do you think that was? It, Aside from weather, it, it very much was weather related. I, that that was the story in the first quarter, and right. it, it's not to confuse it with the U.S. economy is going to come roaring back to life here. <laughs> but it, it's in a natural position where the U.S. economy, along with the global economy, is naturally going to be able to pick up a little steam here, and, and that will be the motivator. Now, what do you think the U.S. Fed is going to be doing this year? They, they really are between a rock and a hard place because they need to withdraw and exit QE. They, there's no question that's going to have long-term consequences for their economy. The, the, the problem and the dilemma that they face, and they've started to talk about recently, it was the New York Fed President William Dudley, is what do they do with their four tri uh, $3 trillion balance sheet? Do they continue to reinvest in the mortgage-backed securities and support the U.S. housing market? Or do they start to pair that back as well? And that's really much going to create a bit of a dilemma for the Fed, especially with what you have going on in Europe. And you see the European Central Bank starting to ease. It's going to direct funds towards the U.S. So it is going to be a bit of an issue for the U.S. Fed. Now, what do you see happening with the ECB? A big date next Thursday, because or this Thursday, excuse me, because it's the question. They've been a central bank that really has been all talk, and it's been quite remarkable how much talk they've been with no action. But the the effects that they've had on their markets, driving down the the borrowing costs of governments like Spain and Italy, who you know shouldn't be financing bonds for those record low rates. But they've got major problems in Europe with structural unemployment, with with their youth population continues to grow and it creates huge obstacles for their economy. The other big issues are their small and medium-sized businesses that can't go out and, and raise money and, and borrow and it's really stunting their economic recovery. So I mean, the ECB is going to follow and make some drastic measures but it's not an easy fix for them in Europe. Now Greece and the Euro have returned to some stability. How, how stable do you think those currencies are? I personally think we're in a, almost an eye of a hurricane in, okay. the, in the Eurozone right now. It's definitely a calm before the storm again. The Euro is an ultimately doomed currency and every way you look at the Euro, it should go down. 
It, the problem is it, it's been going against what the, the common sort of thought or thinking is, and it's been rising quite dramatically against the U.S. dollar. Everybody's looking to short the euro, but they've been getting killed by it because, because of the demand for it. it. Long term, I think the euro is doomed, but I think we're in the middle of the hurricane right now. Uh, how much would the, you know, the euro wavering affect gold prices? It, I think the economic uncertainty that's going to come from Europe once again is going to create demand for gold. And that really is. Inflation expectations, that's a driver for gold prices. But economic uncertainty is what creates demand for gold. In times of turmoil, people want to hold gold. And the thought of a Eurozone breakup, any sort of debt crisis or currency crisis starting in the European Union, that, that will be a huge trigger for gold prices. Why do you think gold hasn't responded more to what's been happening in the Ukraine you know, with Russia? Why aren't we seeing more um, action on that front? I, I think we did see a little bit of action. We got about $100 added to the gold price with what went on in Ukraine. But geopolitical crises very rarely uh, contribute long-term to a rally in, in precious metal prices. I think it, it, it's not going to be the be-all and end-all that sees gold prices trade higher. And when Ukraine represents a mere 2% of uh, the European economy, or, or sorry, 0.2% of the global economy, it's not going to be the factor that drives gold prices higher because the financial markets aren't that concerned about what goes on in Ukraine. It, it has an impact, it, it creates a flight to safety, but it's not going to be the long-term driver. Now, why do you think the Canadian dollar has been doing better than expected this year? I, I think Canadian dollar tells a similar story to the price of gold. I, I think Canada represents a small open economy. It's, it's a safe harbor, our government bonds. and. That's what you see from central banks around the world who want diversification from the U.S. dollar. They go out and they buy Canadian dollars. So it creates such a demand for our currency that despite some of the analysts who are saying it's going to go to 85, 80 cents and go lower, it, people still want to hold Canadian dollars. It, it, we saw again uh, futures data today that showed record shorts for the loonie. Everybody's waiting for the loonie to go lower. It, it, it will. Uh, we'll see the short-term noise and the exchange rate. but. You wouldn't be surprised to see the, no, the loony, the Canadian dollar, settle in around 90 cents because of the global demand for our currency. Now, do you follow the silver price much? Yes. What yes. do you think is happening with silver right now? It's been a rough year for silver. It, it's been an extremely <laughs> rough year for silver, and I think where gold prices might catch a little bit of a bid and create demand, it, it's hard for silver because in terms of mine supply, there's a lot more quantities of silver where they can go and they can produce it at a lower price, a lower cost than gold. You can mine silver for five, for ten dollars an ounce. They're also recycling silver and they, they, they're beginning to talk about something called urban mining, so silver from cell phones or other recycled parts. And there's a lot of product available in terms of silver. There's, there's delay in getting product, uh, finished product to market, whether you're buying coins or bars or delivering to the COMEX, but there's still a significant amount of silver around. So. I think silver could go sideways when gold's going higher for a little bit. It, they'll run together in the long run. If gold's going higher, uh, investor sentiment is very much going to move silver with it. But there is a supply of silver that will keep those prices tracking sideways. Awesome. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.